Welcome everyone to our video series and today we have Kawi with us who will start with her introduction and then we will ask her about her life. Welcome Kawi. Uh, can you introduce yourself? Um, what do you do? Where do you work? Everything like that? Yeah, uh, so my name is Kavindya and I was born and raised in Sri Lanka and uh, I my connection to Wellesley is a class of 2019 um, and I did anthropology and cinema and media studies at Wellesley, uh, which is a very exciting time. Um, but my background now is in learning experience design. Uh, so what that means in very simple terms is I uh, bring together researchers and designers and create learning experiences that um, actually help people change the way they think about certain topics or leads to some form of behavioral change. Um, so that's the work I do right now. Um, and I mainly work with kids between the ages of uh, five to 10. Um, I run a startup called Tilly, where we design uh, social emotional learning for kids. Uh, so that's what I do right now. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. So growing up in Sri Lanka and being raised there, um, how was it back then? Like, you know, um, what were your uh, aspirations? Where, how was your schooling? Where did you go to schooling? How was your normal day in Sri Lanka back home? Um, yeah, so I was born in um, an area called Kandy, which is like the central hills of Sri Lanka, mm -hmm. and uh, raised in my mom's a uh, maternal um, village, uh, which was a beautiful sort of uh, tea agricultural community, uh, which was sort of down towards the oh, south. Yeah, yeah, I have seen those. <laughs> yes, the south of Sri Lanka. And uh, yeah, I think growing up, uh, thankfully for me, my mom took me to the city, which is, the, which is Colombo, because yeah. she was very committed to making sure that I learned English which was a big sort of focus for her and a like a sort of a big vision for her that I learned to speak and communicate in English because she saw that as like an equalizer and something that would open doors for me. Yeah. And uh, so I schooled in Colombo. So I've kind of been across the three areas. I think for me, the biggest thing was because I had one foot in Colombo and then one foot in this sort of very rural, isolated village, I saw sort of the difference in opportunity. I saw how lives of girls dramatically changed based on where you were born. Yeah. Um, so I think for me, that was my biggest sort of aha moment, even that got me into learning, um, seeing that difference growing up. Um, and I think, I think um, people don't realize, but you know, focusing on English, although I do focus a lot on learning in native languages, but Focusing yes. on English actually helps a lot. You know, it opens doors and opportunities that you basically don't even know exist. exist. So definitely you need to thank your mom for that. Yes, of um, course. Yes. Thanks, mom. <laughs> um, and so who was your inspiration growing up? Like that one role model that you looked up to? Any person, you can name anyone that you, or you could name yourself. I definitely do. Too. Oh, yeah. I was my own role model. No, it wasn't. Um, <laughs> I think for me, like my mom, my, my dad passed away when I was two years old. Uh, so she raised me on her own. And I think through her, I really liked the way she approached this whole idea of parenting. Um, you know, I was raised on sort of reading these like very leftist magazines when I was like seven or six. Like that's how I learned to read. We would watch films together and we would discuss things. Uh, she told me about like what's happening in the political space in the country. Yeah. Um, and she built this consciousness in me from a very young age. And she was extremely independent, extremely radical. Yeah. And uh, I think for me even with what I do in learning, I'm always like every step of the way, I'm trying to sort of do what she did for me. So I think um, every day I try to be more like her, but she's, she's sort of unreachable. So I think it will be my mother. Yeah. That's, that's an amazing answer and uh, such an honorable tribute. And also, I, I think it's very important to understand that, you know, you have to have that sort of independence when it comes to learning, especially yes. political conscience. Uh, I see parents not focusing on their children but by politically educating them. Like they yes. don't educate them politically, but it's so important because the kid needs to know the environment that they will be entering as an adult. So yeah, to your mom. <laughs> um, <laughs> So the third question is, what is it that you do? I know we talked about it in your introduction, but if you could explain it to us, what is it that you do? 
Yeah. So right now, um, I co-founded a company called Tilly. Uh, we design playful, social, emotional learning for kids. Uh, for people who might not know what sort of social emotional learning is, it's simply how do we start as early as possible at the age of five or even earlier, because we consider the ages of five to 10 to be the most critical development window of a child's life. And what we do is we try to develop these mental models in a child very early on about um, empathy, about kindness, about critical thinking, about emotion regulation, yeah. um, and very simple things like, how do I recognize what I'm feeling? Like, yeah. am I feeling sad? Then why am I feeling this way? And how can I get the support and help I need? Yeah. Um, so building these uh, very sort of positive ways of managing relationships at a very young age. So we do this through play and storytelling, and um, there's a small tech component to it as well. Uh, so that's what that's what I do right now. Yeah, that's, that's amazing. Much needed in Afghanistan, by the way. <laughs> Anyone yeah. who's working from my side. Um, so what made you choose this career? It's one is like, you know, you do the work that you do. A, either you're passionate about it. B, either it's like, you know, good perks to it. So what, yes. but you founded it. So I'm pretty much thinking that it's a drive or a passion. So yeah. what made you choose that? Yeah. Um, so from a very young age, I was a, I was a Girl Scout. So we would um, do these little workshops in schools. So we would travel around the country and do these workshops on good touch and bad touch. So we were simply teaching kids, you know, what's a safe touch? What is unsafe touch? What can you yeah. do if somebody touches you in an inappropriate way? So I think from a very young age, um, both through personal experience, I've something I've always gone back to is there were certain things if I knew at the age of eight or seven or six, like my life would have been very different. And I think a lot of people who work with us at Tilly, that is also their motivation. Yeah. Um, I think I designed it for my own eight-year-old self. Yeah. Um, so I think that is very much my personal motivation. And I also think like a lot of problems in the world, whether it's gender stereotyping, whether it's um, these soaring issues around mental health post-COVID, yeah. or whether it's um, job market issues, yeah. uh, unemployment, I think there are lots of solutions we can find by tackling children at the age of five and 10. Um, yeah. You know, I, I read it somewhere, I don't know where, but this is one thing very important. They're like, you know, you could actually, it's very hard to change grown men rather yes. than focusing on kids. And also it's feasible, fiscally it's feasible. So oh, sure. Definitely, definitely something 100%. that I agree with you on. Um, so you work with uh, at Tilly, you founded it, you focus mainly on cognitive development and your focus is mainly on A, challenging the stereotypes that are built in because yeah. those are learned, that they are not yes. uh, like, you know put into you and when you're born, those are learned. And so tell us about two to three findings that you have found out that could be like unpacked or like, you know, change the narrative uh, or challenge the narrative that we have right now. Toxic masculinity is there, yeah. we have all these different uh, dynamics to our, there's, there's a lot of things, especially when it comes to learning dynamics. Like, you know, if someone is not good in math, they're like, oh, it's genetic or something like that. So two to three things that you think are more useful if someone is watching that would learn from it. Yeah, I think, um some of the things like one key sort of finding for us is uh, when we look at parents who've gone through sort of this experience of social emotional learning where the parent is involved in the child's learning process, we have about sort of 90% of parents who say that this was actually the first time I had a conversation with my child, which wasn't logistical. So it's the first time I asked things about like, how are you feeling? What can I do for you? Oh, why are you feeling upset today? Or was there something that I did that might have made you feel uncomfortable? So having this sort of like a very emotional, uh, feeling-based conversation, like for many parents, this was the first time. Wow. So that's that's one. And I think the second thing that we've seen is um, based on the current context we are in, there's a, there's a lot of research that has been coming out in the past few weeks that show that babies who are born during COVID are actually speaking less. Oh, wow. <laughs> and I don't know if that's a good thing or a bad thing, but it, it, what, what it's showing is there has been a lack of social interaction among children oh, yeah. that 
they are really unable to even craft a conversation or express themselves because they haven't yeah. been around community and people. Yeah. And I think for us, like these are two sort of these staggering conversations um, or like research points that I think were in the midst of sort of a mental health crisis. Uh, children who are going back to school and even adults who've been through these two years of sort of trauma. And I think we really need sort of this social emotional support. Yeah. Um, so I think that's something that has been really driving us over the past um, past year or so. Yeah, yeah. I think I think I, I'm pretty sure this is irrelevant, but also very relevant. Have you seen the Instagram trend that is like, you know, the pandemic babies because they are very different from the babies normally. So I think they are exactly. I remember I have seen that. The, yeah, I see that on uh, it's like a TikTok thing. Yeah, yeah. it's yeah. so real. So now that we have learned these two things, two important things, a having a uh, conversation with a kid based on uh, normal emotions and how you feel emotional learning mm -hmm. rather than logistics, and also that kids are different when it comes to pandemic babies. Um, one, solu uh, one solution that you think is very important on the problem that you're working on. Um, one, I wouldn't say universal, but I am pretty sure the way we work, there's one universal solution that we think could solve a lot of problems. So what would be that one problem and that one solution that you would want to suggest? I think for us, one of the big issues that we're trying to tackle is the fact that kids are coming out of school knowing the Pythagoras theorem or knowing sort of um, every single detail about World War I and World War II and about how deep our oceans are, very fact-based knowledge, but they're really not coming out of school knowing what are my personal boundaries? How do I deal with a period of sort of depression? Yeah. How do I tackle a tough situation? How do I tackle a tough conversation? Yeah. What are my sexual and reproductive health rights? Um, what are my civic rights? I think a lot of kids are coming out without learning the essentials of how to live life. I think that's a key problem in every education yeah. system across the world. It doesn't yeah. matter which country you're from. And I think for us, one of the solutions that for us that at least we're proposing is how can we tackle K through five? So grades sort of kindergarten and grades one through five, how can we design curriculums that by the time a child is 10, they have these sort of a basic skill set around their social emotional well-being, around sort of their body and safety, around boundaries, so that we set up a child for a safe and healthy and happy life. Um, and I think it's, it's, it's I mean, it's, it sounds very simple when I say it, uh, but it requires so much funding, government cooperation, people coming together. But I think yeah. that's a North Star to aspire for. Um, yeah, yeah, especially the parents who would be willing to put their kids in that thing because exactly. every parent is taught that, you know, your kid needs to learn mathematics, blah, 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 but they are not told to, that they need to have emotional learning too. So without exactly. taking a lot of your time, what, what suggestions would you have or any advice that you would have for any younger person, maybe in South Asia, Central Asia, or all over the world, who yeah. likes your work, who wants to know more about your work, or wants to follow your footsteps? What are your suggestions or advice that would that you would give to any younger? Yeah, um, I think for me, one of the key pieces of advice, or rather like sharing of what I've learned is to find a problem that you're passionate about. I think a lot of times we get very obsessed with our solutions um, and we try to push a solution without really understanding what problem we're solving. I think the key is to get so madly obsessed with the problem that you're trying to solve and learning that some of the solutions you come up with will change over time. They will be iterations, you'll have to pivot. Uh, but I think finding that problem that you're passionate about solving really like sustains you. Yeah. Um, I'm sure you know that too. And I think it's uh, it's something that grounds you and gives yeah. you purpose every single day to just wake up and go at it. So I think that will be my one key piece. Find a problem that you're obsessed with. That is amazing piece of advice. Thank you so much, Kavi. Thank you so much for making the time and okay. coming here. My pleasure.